Welcome to Golf Industry Guru and the Gig Podcast, where we interview the best and brightest golf and hospitality leaders on the planet. On today's episode, you will learn some proven real-world solutions that will help you and your team solve some of your biggest golf business challenges. So stick around for some tips, tools, and training to get you, your people, and your business powered on. Here's your host, James Cronk. Well, here we are again at Golf Industry Guru, and we are excited today in our podcast to have a return visit from Andy Stangenberg from Q Principal. Um, I've known Andy for uh, many years. He's a, a global traveler and trainer, consultant, expert in the world of guest service and, and the customer experience and staff training. Uh, an author, uh, and he's got uh, so many various different skills and talents, and I'll uh, ask him to share that with uh, with you today. But we've got, um, you know, an exciting podcast to talk about how do you give great customer experience when you're behind the mask? And that is the title of our session today, Behind the Mask, How to uh, Give Service with a Smile When They Can't See You Smile. And so uh, welcome, Andy, and uh, so great to have you on Golf Ministry Guru Radio today. James, I'm uh, excited to be back. And uh, hey, what, what, a, what a fitting topic right now. I mean, that was just, uh, that hits the, hits the, the nail. Uh, you know, I, I gave that some thought, and, and thinking back, what Q Principal does when we do our seminars and we do our implementation learning methodologies, um, there, there's so many different um, methods you can draw from and how people learn. There's audible learning, there's visual learning, and then there's kinesthetic learning, which is by reenact. And when you're looking at service as a whole, that service really is not a job, it's a lifestyle. Service is who you are as a person. And when you first kind of brought this across and, and, and I said, you know, how do we deliver uh, a feeling? Because that that's what service is to me. It's an, it's an emotion. It's a feeling. I mean, service, think about it. It's something that no one can touch, but everyone can feel. And now we are in this, in this predicament with these masks and, and we have to, we have to come to work and we have to put that, that positive persona on. And, and a story comes to mind that really demonstrates how we demonstrate service uh, perfectly. When, when I started out 15 years ago to become a professional speaker, I hired a speaking coach. You know, I mean, just because you have a passion and you have some content, that doesn't make you a speaker, right? So, so I realized very quickly that I need some professional help. And I would like to share with the listeners what, what transpired, which was an, a life-changing experience for, for me, and what he did, his name is Austin McGonigal, probably one of one of the top um, vocal coaches and speaking coaches uh, in the U.S. Uh, by, by a long shot. So I was lucky then to become a student. So my very first um, introduction with him, he invited me to his studio in Atlanta. And there were five, six other people in the room. And, and I was mighty nervous. Are you, can you imagine? Here's this award-winning world champion speaker. And, and all the other execs, and here comes me, you know, I mean, you, wet hands, and you, you, get the, you get the emotion. Oh, you bet, I've been there. Oh, yeah. So, so I walk in, in the studio, there was a small stage, and we all sit there, and nobody speaks, right? And he does his introduction, he is a, an Irish guy. So, and he said, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I teach you how to become an impactful speaker, I want to demonstrate something. And he gave us a piece of paper with a joke. So everybody had a small joke on a paper, and he told us to memorize that joke. And uh, so I did. And, you know, he said, now I want you on camera. And, and, and there was this big, big camera in the room, like, like almost like a television camera. Not that I was already nervous enough, right? And, and on stage, I mean, it's just like, ooh, and the, the spotlight was on. And, I mean, this was nerve-wracking. So anyway, so, <laughs> so he asked us to come on stage one by one and demonstrate and present that joke. Right? And he didn't say anything. He didn't coach us at all. So we did. It was my turn, and, and I, I remember my lines, and I think I did pretty well. So when we were done, he set us all back down. He said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your performance. Now I want you to forget that I just gave you a joke or that you just demonstrate a joke because I'm showing you your footage, but I'm turning the tone off. So you can hear. The volume hear, off. Yeah, the volume. You can oh, wow. hear what you just spoke about. And so I want you to forget that it could possibly be a joke. 
So based on your body language and your hand position and your facial introduction, I want you to imagine what you could have possibly just talked about. <laughs> and when it was my turn, I, I literally looked like I was about to beat somebody up. <laughs> I mean, I was tense, as you imagine. My face was in, in, in wrinkles. I was so deep concentrated that, and, 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 and somebody, some other people, they looked like a priest in church. Somebody fiddled with their hands and was so shy. It was hilarious. And that's when, he, that's when he said something that was a game changer that really launched my career. Now, even what I teach, when we teach service forward uh, 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 moving uh, uh, indicators, service indicators. Think about what people remember about us because service is it creates memory. That's what service is, right? Service is not just serving a meal from the left and clearing from the right. That's a technical part of service or doing your job within your desi designated scope of responsibility. But service is creating nuggets to make a difference. And that's what people remember. And if you are in any kind of conversation, if it's one on one with a friend, with a family member, or if it's a, a church, or if it's at school, or if you're doing a massive presentation in front of 3,000 people, you want to be remembered. You want to be memorable. And he told us, psychologically speaking, 57% of what people remember about you is solely the way you positioned yourself, the way you stood, and the way you open your body up when you speak. Think about it. 57%. 35%. Is your tonality, it's your intonation, the way you sound when you speak, and the rest are the words you use. That's like 7%. Brilliant. What I a mean, wonderful lesson. What a fantastic experience. Right. I mean, a, a game change, right? So when you tell a joke, you got to smile. When you say good morning, you got to smile. But now getting back to your, to your uh, opening question, how do we do that when our face is literally hidden with a mask? And I do this in my seminars, when we do kinesthetic learning, when we're literally teaching people social skills on steroids, how do we become memorable through our engagement, through projecting our voice and, and to choose our words differently? Because even if it's only 7%, our words have power, no question, right? So how do we? Now, there, there are different ways to smile. There's the angry smile. There's the displacement smile. Then there is the I don't care to smile. Then there is the, you know... I really hate my job smile. Then there is the, my manager told me to smile. Then there, you, you, I mean, you've been, you've been yes. there. We walk into a <laughs> store and people smile us and you, know, you smile at us if, and you know, listen. They, they if we're lucky, they're smiling. If we're <laughs> lucky, they're smiling. <laughs> if we are lucky, they're smiling, right. So, but then there's only one smile that has the power to, 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 to make us, to make us feel, to make your skin uh, 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 convolve. It, it's the most beautiful smile you will ever see. And that is the first smile of a newborn baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Babies have mm -hmm. no motive to smile. They just do. Mm -hmm. If a baby is clean and fed, babies smile up to 120 times a day for no reason. How mm -hmm. many times do we smile? Let's not go there. Anyway, mm -hmm. but think about how babies smile. Babies don't smile with their mouth. Well, good, sure. No. But they smile with their eyes. With their eyes, and yes. And they pop their eyebrows. I literally do an exercise when I travel to clubs and I do, do these intensive master programs with clubs on getting staff ready to not just welcome people, but to welcome. Right? We, we're teaching people the body language on popping their eyebrows a little bit. But man, think about it. When you see a good friend right, that you haven't seen in a while, you know, we do this naturally. This is this is created to us by, by by impulse, right? There is this, oh, nice to meet you, smile, and then there's the, hey, good to see you again, smile, mm -hmm. and then that changes your facial impression and 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 and, and sends these messages that, that that can't be heard, but it can't be felt. But I said earlier, service is something that no one can touch, but everyone can feel, and and that smile goes with it, right? So so popping your eyes and open up your eyes a little bit, that creates that welcoming and that, that authenticity behind that, that what's real. Because a service has to be real. It can't be fake. It can't be borrowed. It can't be lended to somebody. It has to come from within, right? So, so a smile can be given even if we are covering our face 
behind the mask. And, and I think, um, one of the things I, I love that, Andy, that's such a, a great example right there, just about eyebrows and about raising your face. But one of the things I've found so interesting in the last many, many months where you now, you know, masks are so common and prevalent everywhere you go. And I don't know about you, but I've really been able to start to communicate in a different way when you're wearing a mask. You, I think you naturally start to realize that if you want to smile at someone when you're walking by them in the street, you know, previously you'd give a little smile, a little, you know, whatever it might be, a little, show a little teeth, you know, give a little smile. Right. But now I, I really re- recognize lifting my eyes and using my eyes as that right. kind of uh, recognition to, to show that I'm recognizing them and that I'm, you know, saying hello right. without saying hello, you know, like you would normally do in the street. And so when well, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about was, you know, one of the, what, what I want that we're talking about here is when, when you go into the golf shop to, to ring in a, a green fee and the staff behind the counter might be wearing a mask or, and, and I'm talking not about the clear shield mask. I'm talking obviously about the cloth right. covering masks that cover our faces. And when you, you go into a mostly right now in the service business and the restaurant side of things, you know, or, or even you go into a staff meeting, you're sitting around with your fellow staff members right now in most parts of the world, you need to kind of wear a mask if you're going to be in the same room. So, so what do you think? What are some of the techniques that staff employees can use to um, engage with guests and to and to show them that uh, that they're open and willing and ready to to give that memorable experience and that service. Yeah, that's a great question. First of all, uh, you know, speaking of golf golf pro shops, that's a uh, for me that's always a hot topic uh, when I go in retail stores because what I've learned over the years, and I don't stereotype that. There's some people out there that are fabulous, but. But, but many times I'm getting the feeling that people are more interested to take things, to put things on the shelf than helping me to take things off the shelf. <laughs> yes. <Right>? <laughs> but, <laughs> great but I, way to put it. I have a great scenario what we can do. First of all, speaking with our hands, speaking with our body. I mean, you know, and that needs to be learned. That's, that for me, that is social education that can be learned. And, and I mean, I'm not sure how, how your upbringing was, but... You know, when, when, when I was sitting at a dinner table and we had friends come by or, you know, I was taught to stand up, walk up to our guests and shake their hands or, or at least acknowledge them, give them eye contact and shake my hand and say, hello, how are you? That was you weren't that, you weren't taught to stare down into your phone that's on your lap and well, to maybe not. pray pray to the fruit as we say <laughs> which is the you have an apple in your hand and so you're praying to the fruit exactly hundred percent right so I think that a lot has to do with upbringing but I think that can be that can be learned and that's why Q principle is is so so busy um, in and even in these times because people need that help with social awareness that's really what that is for example I can't. When, when I walk up to you, give me a, you know, this is an interesting uh, experiment you can make. Talk to people, look in their eyes, and you will find that often people look to your left shoulder. That's where people talk. People talk. And that really, besides being a sign of, uh, of uh, a lack of confidence, but it, it also makes the conversation very impersonal, right? So, mm-hmm. so having, like, let's, walking up to a golf pro shop and, and check in for your green fees, for example. Um, there comes a parallel story to mind that we did in a hotel in, in Hawaii, in Kauai. And um, their, 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 their check-in scores were fairly low. The hotel is a world-class hotel. I mean, uh, world-ranked. But uh, the biggest problem was front desk check-in. Now, if you think about where Kauai is located, I mean, you're flying for 15 hours to go to this island, which is supposed to be Hawaii. And then you, you come to this hotel, you pay five $600 a night, to stay there, and uh, and the, the check-in scores are extremely low. That means we're missing somewhat on the engagement. So the general manager is a dear friend of mine. So he said, Andy, can you work like a couple of hours behind the front desk and kind of watch my staff on how this is? And I love to do that. I love to go in the operation and feel it firsthand what really transpires. What is the authenticity? What's the reality between... Because let's face it, our image is created by the engagement between staff and members. 
That's a fact. Mm-hmm. 90%, it's not management. 90% of the reality that transpires becomes the reality of our members through the behavior of our staff. So I stepped behind the desk. James, within a half an hour, I knew exactly what was the problem. So here, here comes a family of five. They're exhausted. They are done. They flew all day to be there. And now think about how these desks are designed. This is a design flaw. It's not necessarily a human capital flaw. So these people are checking in now, but the agent is forced to look down. Because this computer screen is embedded, or often is embedded, in the cabinet. Or there's a small screen that's facing down. So by default, they can't even look up. They Mm -hmm. have to look down. And now they are speaking while they are, next time you play golf and you be checked in somewhere, make aware, be aware that these people are actually speaking into the computer screen because they have no choice. You know, they're they're typing, oh, Mr. Stangenberg, you're welcome. How how are you? you?" They might be nice, but they don't make it realistic. They don't make it authentic because they're they're looking down. So what we did, brilliant, and this was not my idea. I just told the GM, hey, your agents are looking down. So people and people looking at people's top of their head, and that's not a welcoming aloha spirit. That's not welcoming around the world, right? Mm -hmm. And he came up with the idea, how about if you're lifting these screens up, if you're putting them on swivels, where where you, first of all, better for your posture, you stand taller, but with that, you have no choice but to stand up, and here's your screen, and here are the people, and you look in their eyes, and he said, my scores improved within weeks. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's what I thought. I, I mean, again, I can't take credit for the idea, but we just found the defect, the the inhibitor, so to speak. But think about how many pro shops in golf have their computer screens low and deep. And with that, uh, a personal conversation is almost impossible. Well, and I think I think to take it another um, to expand on that, Andy, because it's such a great example. And, 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 And I think what also can happen sometimes is that these physical limitations create excuses sometimes. And, and, and like we said, lots of people don't do these things on purpose because they don't want to be personable. They, they don't want to be friendly. Right. But when they have it so easily in front of them to look down and to do their job and to check in and make sure they cross the T's and dot the I's, we have to find ways to recondition them to say, no, no, don't do that yet. Don't cross the T's and dot the I's yet. The first thing you got to do is you got to greet them, look them in the eye, say hello, say welcome. You know, it's a beautiful day out there. The greens are running fantastic. Someone just made a hole in one on hole number six. Okay. Now that I've welcomed you, now I know who you are. Now you know who I am. Now you feel good, warm and fuzzy. Okay, now let's cross the T's and dot the I's right, right, and lean right, down right. and deal with Become the Become a storyteller, right? And open yeah. your hands when you speak with me. I mean, just, you yeah. don't have the hands in their pocket or their... You know, you, use your hand. Use even one hand. You know, just say, hey, welcome. It's good to have yes. you. How is your day? Looking forward to what? going out there. And so that's what, you know, so the eyes, the eyebrows, obviously the, the body language, how do you, how do you, you know, try to get that individual that's not very expressive in the service business to, to be more uh, forthcoming with their, with their body language, with their energy? What are, what are some of the tools that you've used? I know you guys do so much with training. One of the things I love about Q Principal, Andy, is how you use acting and improvisation yeah. in your training to, to get uh, teams to, um, to, to see new ways of doing things. So what are, with, with that, once again, this whole behind the mask challenge that we have now and probably in 2021 with regards to, um, with limitations on, on, on mask wearing. What are some, some tricks, I guess, that managers could use to help their team be more engaging when you they're know, behind great, the mask? Great, great question. That follows up on, on the, the methodology on how Q principle operates. And you just mentioned improv, right? And improv is usually associated to comedy. We have, we were one of the very first companies who converted improv successfully, not to teach people comedy, but to teach people uh, forward thinking and, and secure and confident behaviors, because that's what improv really does. And uh, so, so 
you know, the, and the reason how this started it really echoes right on the question that you just asked. Uh, this was years ago. You know, I started my content and my programs, my audible and visual learning. Uh, this must have been 12, 13 years ago. Just I was two years into speaking, maybe. This engineer came up to me and he said, Andy, can I talk to you after a program? He said, I love your programs. I love the message. It really makes a lot of sense to me. But I'm an engineer. I'm not I'm not wired to walk up to somebody and say, hey, good morning. How are you? Have a nice day. That's not me. I get sweaty hands. I have an anxiety attack. That's just not me. He said, you gave me the why this is important, but you really didn't show me how do I overcome that hurdle, that 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 fear factor, so to speak, because really it is. Public speaking has a tremendous fear for people, and public speaking can be also dialed onto a one-on-one -on -one conversation where, where people are more shy and we have to respect that. And that's where something comes in that we all have. And there's a phrase out there. It's, a, it's called, it's motive alone that gives character to the action of humankind. Mm. So, so what we are tapping into is that often businesses, clubs, hotels, airlines, whatever, we, they, they, they're teaching staff to become better in their workload, to become friendly. Like when you walk into a restaurant and the manager said to your staff, Hey, smart at our guests, right? And that's really, it becomes a job description. And it makes no sense. It's not relevant to people. But when you tell people, look, this is not a job description, that's a life skill. That's mm -hmm. something that right now you're here, but your life is an evolution. And everybody has dreams, James. Everybody, I, I, in 2020, good, that was a grip in the toilet. We all know that, especially for the speaking industry. But um, in the hospitality industry, but 2019, when I traveled like 250 days, can you imagine how many thousands of people I had in front of me? And everybody has dreams and visions and goals and aspirations and what we want to do and design with our lives. And, and we all know our limitations. And many of them know that they're a little shy. And that's why these exercises that we do with body language, with we are showcasing people that often... Our behavior is driven by impulse. And there are two separate impulses that we draw from. It's the impulse that we choose to resist, like by saying, you know, I'm shy. I, I'm shy and, and there's nothing you can do about it. And, and that's just how I am. Or there's the impulse that we choose not to resist by saying, I'm going to break the, the, the barrier. I'm going to try this. I'm going to learn this. And if you give people motive with their family, their future, people want to have their own business down the line, because social skills is by all means not just reserved for private clubs and, 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 and restaurants and hotels. Social skills help you as a lawyer, a doctor, uh, an airline pilot. I mean, you got to be interesting. And when you give people that fruit that makes sense to them, out of a sudden, you get something that is absolutely essential for learning, and that's called receptiveness. We are mm -hmm. measuring our success of learning not by content, not by the way the people laugh. No, but the way people receive, convert, and then deal with that by saying, "Let me." even if it's baby steps, it doesn't matter. But think about it, if an employee out of a sudden pops their eyebrows a little bit and says, good morning, and they get response, that is measured in success. Yeah, so true. It's so true, Andy. That's such a great point. You know, I, I always like to say to managers, you can't tell people to have fun. You, <laughs> you have to create an environment that allows your people to have fun, right. which is how in, in the hospitality business, which is how that rubs off onto the guest and to the customer, right? And right. so right. I think I think it's it's so true what you're saying about the fact that it's got to be intrinsically something that it, it that happens and then the result is the outcome of that feeling, right? So yeah. so like I always say great service is not about telling people to smile. No. Great no. service is about having people that are happy at their work and so they're already smiling. Right. Right. <laughs> like they it's don't, not for they the don't right put reason. on this yeah, they don't put on the smile to walk to the table. They they show they go they're already smiling when they go to the table. I mean that's that's the objective, right? It's you know, not a turn an off comment. and an on button. Great comment because you know what I say when when I when I ask people who do you work for, and people look at me all stern and said, I work for the club. I said, Whoa, stop. You may be employed by the club, but who do you work for? You work for yourselves and for your family. So don't smile for the club. Don't smile for your members. Smile for your children. Smile for their future because that's what you create. And 
this banquet employee came up to me a while back and he said, Andy, you know, I have a, a, a new baby and you just opened my world. You're right. I smile for my baby. I smile for my wife. I smile for my family. I, I smile for my future. And, and you, mm-hmm. this guy was so excited to have seen the light. And, and, and that's, when, that's when success becomes tremendously powerful because it makes sense of it all. You make sense to people. Now, the, 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 you mentioned something in your questions uh, previously. How do we make that impact on service? And uh, we talked about body language. We talked about popping your eyebrows. And there is a great game that listeners can play with their staff if they wish. I'm going to give you now an improv game that we have been tremendously successful with uh, when it comes to your, uh, your choice of words. And that's the well, next part. You can use this with mask, without mask. It doesn't matter, right? That's a very successful improv game. And that's called descriptive speaking because that is the next element to completing the welcoming form. It's the way you look, the way you sound, you know, the way you pitch. Hey, how are you? It's good to see you. So you kind of roll your, your tonation. But then there's the spoken word. Have you ever walked into a, a club, a bar, a restaurant? And people look at you and you say, hello, how are you? And they say, good. Mm-hmm. Right? Or, uh, <laughs> All the time. <laughs> another day, another dollar, right? Or, you know, mm-hmm. I'm here. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> table not, for four. It, yeah, a table for four, right? And it's just very flat and monotone. So what the improv does, it's a brilliant game. So what I do is I pair two people up, right? And then I uh, start with pay- person one. I said, I want you to put an imaginary gift in your hand and give it to person two. Like an apple, whatever. So imagine it. Now, person two, you do the same thing to person one, a different gift. Give him the gift and say, that's, um, you know, that's a watch. Boom. There you go. So silly at first. Now it becomes, and you will not believe how many people struggle with that because nobody likes one-sided conversation, right? So uh, now here comes the game. Now, the person one uses the apple again. I said, okay, I here's the apple. And then as soon as the sentence is done, person two claps. When you hear that clap, you have to reformat that sentence and make that apple more dramatic or more descriptive by saying, here's a beautiful apple. Next clap. Mm-hmm. Here's a, a, a tasty apple. Next clap. Here's a sweet, tasty apple. So we are learning to use vocabulary back into our words to make our conversations more memorable and more in- interesting. And you will not believe how many people are picking up on that. And that starts with your family at home. Don't just come home and say, hey, I love you. Tell people why you love your family, right? Come home and say, you know, honey, you are such an amazing cook. I, I'm always excited when you cook. You just, the flavors are just wonderful. Thank you for cooking. That's how you communicate. Yes, yeah, so it's so much more powerful. Oh, and this game goes back and forth, how these people have to now make something out of that gift to make that more descriptive, more dynamic, more powerful, and more fun. And and out of a sudden, you become a much more interesting conversationalist, and that all adds up to create an atmosphere and an energy that the staff is driving. Not You can't mandate that. You have to teach that. You have have to to teach that. So good. So true. You know, learning is constant. And often one of the templates, one of the templates we have on Golf Industry Guru, we call it the design guest experience, designed member experience. And it's exactly what you just described. <clears throat> it's it's getting every department head to literally write out step by step the member of the guest experience and each and each touch point along the way. So, for example, you know, I walk into the lobby or, or the you know the guest walks into the lobby and then moves towards the golf shop, for example. Well, in the lobby, you know what magazines are on the table, what music is playing, what's the smell, right? What's the just what's the flowers? You know how fresh are the flowers? You know when they walk into the golf shop, is it hello? Are you just for today, or is it? Mr. Jones, you can't believe it. We got those new Adidas shirts in yesterday, and I put one aside for you because I know how much you like pink. You know, whatever it might be. But that description, like you said in that wonderful game, in finding more and more terms and words to describe what the experience is going to be. It's like saying, what's today's soup? Well, it's it's either it's it's tomato soup 
or it's this unbelievably hand, homemade crafted tomato soup with some of the most luscious, delicious tomatoes that we just got in from California. But that's exactly right. That's what we teach. You nail yeah. it. So that's which exactly. soup would you prefer to have? Yeah. Would you like to have the first one or the second one? Right? Everyone wants the second one. Right. That's a, that's a fantastic game, Andy. I love, I love how that can be. Um, simply implemented in a in a manager's orientation oh. or a training, and and, and have people fun. to put that together. Fun. Mm-hmm. Learning, learning becomes fun. It makes a difference. You know that, that. I mean, I can tell you many stories where I walk into a bar, you know, luxury hotel or club, and I say, "Good evening. How are you? Good." Then I then I think, okay, well, guest entertains bartender. What a concept, right? They said, so, <laughs> so how are you? Good. Where are you from? Here. Oh, I like this city. That's overrated. What you want to drink? I mean, that's you know, and and, and you, I remember these things on how not to do it. And then under controversy, I was in New York from all places, and I walk into an Irish pub. I mean, it was uh, lunchtime. I had a day off, and I love bangers and mash and a Guinness. That is just my to go. I have a house in Ireland actually, so I'm very. Irishly touched. So, so I walk in and I, and I, the bartender comes over, Irish guy introduces himself and I say, can I have a Guinness please? And he said, nope. And I, I've never heard that before. So I looked up, I said, what? And he said, you can have a beautiful Guinness. Ah, I nice. went back to that club and the entire week I was in New York. Sure. Build a relationship. That one I word. love it. No, nope. one word. I'm not giving you a Guinness. I'm giving you a beautiful Guinness. Yeah, that's see, fantastic. That I love it. That sticks with you. That story is at least ten years old. That sticks with you. These are the memories that people have in their store to make a difference, to be the difference, to create a difference. And I, and I have hundreds of these stories. But you know, teaching people uh, how to do certain things is important, right? Their job description, their scope of responsibility, their SOPs, and all. But teaching them why. And then take that to that next level, what you said, the design thinking, that, that creating that, that new personality. And when that comes to flourishing, when that comes to shine, you can give people all the mask you want. If they adhere and adapt these behavioral patterns, that mask doesn't make much of a difference. Andy, that was just spectacular. What a fantastic lesson in customer service that was so enlightening about not being inhibited and afraid of masks, not being uh, being aware that service is more than just a, a, a face or some teeth or a smile. And, uh, and I look forward to uh, having you uh, back on our podcast and other elements. You'll find other uh, of Andy's materials in Golf Industry Guru, including the Evolution of Service, which is a series that uh, you'll hear many more examples and lessons from Andy, who's got so many brilliant skills. And I invite you to reach out to Q Principal directly and to Andy and, uh, and invite them to, uh, to come and, uh, and teach your staff about how to hand out beautiful Guinnesses. So, uh, <laughs> Andy, thank you so much for your time. And, uh, and uh, we look forward to having you again on Golf Industry Guru Radio. I hear, I commend what you do. It's it's essential in these times to offer innovative learning to all these clubs. And you know what? And think about it. clubs are not in the, in the in the education business; they're in the club business, right? And and they do this very well. And it's great to see that there is need and demand for people like you and Scott and myself, and and being utilized. And 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 uh, and I'm really super thrilled to be part of your podcast and of your platform. And uh, there are articles I'm sending to you that I wrote uh, and, and, and much more material to come. So I, I love to be part of that. And congratulations to all of you. Well done. Awesome. Thank you, bud. Till next time. Till next time. We'll talk. All the best. See you on right. the inside. Thanks for listening to The Gate Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode and mostly that you learned a few things that will help you improve your business. Join us next time as we continue to bring you the best and brightest golf and hospitality leaders on the planet. Thanks for listening.